In this video, I want to explain how you can use Elastic Signing Templates to create mobile applications, or I should say, to capture user consent directly inside of your mobile application without having to send them a document for signature separately. This will help you automate some of the workflow and admin that you have to go through if you sell high ticket services to the consumer market. And if you're wondering who I am, my name is Sofian Saudi. I'm an ex DocuSign staff and founder of SolidSign Consulting, where we help organizations implement and integrate DocuSign e-signature within all your workflow. So if you're interested in getting some help to use DocuSign better or faster, then you can book a consultation with one of our automation consultants using the link just down below. So for example, in this screenshot, you can see this is a, a loan application. The loan amount is here. We can imagine that the user is applying for a loan and they've filled out all the information about the loan, maybe their name, their address, the loan amount, and all of this stuff. If we assume that the user has provided all the required information to apply for the loan, then they arrive to the bottom of the page. In this specific page, what you can see that there is a DocuSign logo. Why? Because this specific rectangle here is the DocuSign Elastic Template. Elastic templates are a, an element that you can add inside of your website or your web application to capture one-click consent. In this example, the only thing that the user has to do after they filled out all the application form is to check this checkbox and then click on request loan. And so this is the actual Elastic template and it looks like it's fully part of the website. So if we imagine that Tally is the bank offering the loan, and then Tally has embedded this Elastic template from DocuSign directly inside of their web application. And the beautiful thing is that you can also add some custom variables inside of the agreement. What do I mean by custom variables? If we look closer, we can see the name of the person, we can see the account number, and we can also see the address. This means that DocuSign was able to pull that information from some of the previous steps that the borrower, so in this example, Jennifer Doe, has provided. This is really interesting because you can dynamically create documents without having to do any manual work by simply pulling information from the previous steps. So if you imagine that Jennifer has submitted her name, her email, the loan amount that she desired and all of that in previous steps, in previous forms that are not DocuSign related, you're still able to pass this information from the previous steps inside of the DocuSign agreement. And then once Jennifer will click on I certify that I have read and agreed to all of the stuff and then click on request loan, DocuSign will capture that and you will be able to uh, download the certificate of completion if needed or keep this as your record so that you can actually confirm and prove that the customer has agreed to the terms and conditions that surround whatever the product you're selling. So I hope that this makes sense. Now let me actually show you how to create and use your Elastic Template. So the first thing that you want to do is to head to your templates and then Elastic Templates. And here you're going to click on, on Create, New, and then let's just call it Terms and Conditions, for example. And here we're going to add our document. I'm just going to use a dummy Terms of Service. This is the one that we're actually using on our website, but we don't require you to confirm that you agree to our terms and conditions by just visiting the website. So this is just an example. So I've got my document here and I can choose whether I want to display my document as the actual document. So exactly like this, so you can read where the user can read the full document before they agree. Or I can also choose that I want to display the document as a link. And when I do that, instead of showing the actual agreement here, there'll just be a link that the user will have to click on to then see the document. It's just a question of personal preference, to be honest. I'm just going to say document because I do like to show the entire agreement here. And then I can set whether the user must view and read or just must view. I'm just going to say must view and then I'm going to click on save. If I want to add personalized information about the person agreeing to my terms and conditions, I can do so by adding custom fields. To do that, I'm simply going to head to edit and then edit here again. Let's just say that I wanted to add the person's full name here. I'll simply click on full name and I will add it here. Now, those are the default fields that DocuSign provides you with. But if I want to add more fields, I can simply download the CSV sample from here. So if I click on CSV sample, it's going to download the file. And then I'm going to be able to add more information, more fields here. Address, for example, loan amounts. And then I could, let's just say that I don't want my date. I'm going to delete that row and save this and upload this back inside of my data field just right here. 
And now I can go back inside of my document, edit this, and I can grab the field. Oh, actually, I don't think that I saved it. But you get the point. I think I just didn't click on save. And then I can insert my other fields. And from here, I can also change the formatting of all of this, although I think it's easier to do in Word. But if you do want to add a line break, or if you want to make some edits to the agreement, you can do that directly from here. You can also add a table, you can add a page break, an image, you can add a bunch of stuff. This is really useful in here. I'm going to click on save and then save again. Now it's almost done. The last thing that I want to do is to customize the display name. So this thing here, I'm just going to say terms and conditions. And then I can select as well, do I want my recipients after agreeing to those terms and conditions to be able to download or receive an, uh, an email copy of the document? I'm just going to skip that because I don't think it's important for me. And then the button labels, do I just want it to say agree or do I want it to say, for example, request loan? Right, so here I could say request loan and I'm going to get a preview of what my document looks like. And then I can also obviously customize the brand. For now, I've only got the DocuSign logo in here, but I could add the SolarSign logo and then save my template, activate it now. And there you go. My terms and conditions elastic template is live. I want to test it. I'm going to click on test and then test my template. And here it is. In this specific example, I have not embedded the Elastic template in my own web application. So I'm not able to pull my name and uh, other variables from previous steps because I'm just showing it to you now in this example. But if I had done so, then I'll be able to see my name in my email. And so now that we know that the actual template works the way that it's supposed to work, we can actually copy the code. So we can go here, copy code, copy all of that, give that to our developer and then tell our developer, hey, this is the code and these are the variables that I want you to field from the previous step. And this is how DocuSign Elastic Templates work. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. And if you need more help with DocuSign, you can book a consultation, an implementation strategy session during which we'll analyze your workflow and help you work out the best ways to implement DocuSign for your specific need. You can book a consultation using the link just down below. I will see you in the next video. And until then, happy signing.